This is the test tone device of Bitwig Studio. It can generate all kinds of sounds and tones just for, you know, testing speakers or testing your system or maybe testing effect chains or whatever you want to test. So you can use this to just, you know, play out some kind of static tone. So we have your multiple wave shapes we can select from sine, triangle, square, saw up, saw down, direct, which is nice for uh, creating impulse responses because it's just a small burst of noise with all frequencies in it. I think that's the main purpose of that. And we have white noise, which is all frequency equally loud. You can see equally power per frequency. So it's technically every frequency the same loudness. And then we have pink noise, which is equal power per octave. So it's more, you know, how you perceive sound. It's um, um, yeah, a more toned down uh, version of noise. So this is also nice to have. And we can switch this here to sign. And we have a frequency knob where you can dial in the frequency of the oscillator here. We have a gain knob. And again, of course, changes the loudness of the oscillator. And we have a bipolar selector here where we can select between um, only positive values of the oscillator and positive and negative values of the oscillator. So we can switch between bipolar and unipolar if you want to. And we have a mix knob here where we can mix in some signals from before uh, in the chain. Uh, maybe you have a synthesizer there and you want to mix the test tone here with the synthesizer sound. You can do this with the mix knob if you, yeah, if you kind of want to do that. So um, a fairly simple device also, but because we have Bitwig Studio, we can um, also use this in creative ways, right? So first up, I want to show you how this looks here on our oscilloscope. This is a lower sound, the bass sound. You can see here we have only positive values. You can switch this here to bipolar mode, and now we have also positive and negative values. So this is a um, yeah a correct signal. Let's put it that way. So this one here is just a sine wave, as you can see, and also maybe here or feel on your speakers. It's a deep bass. So what we can do with this is we can uh, first up dial in here a frequency of C3 so we can type in the number or the, the, note, the note number or the note notifier note uh, um, what's the name the note name C3 so we can type this in and we land on 262 hertz which is correct of course and we can bring in here a key track key track modulator and with the key track modulator, we start here on C3 also, what we just dialed in here, C3, so that's correct. And we have a spread or note spread of 64 semitones. So we just modulate this here by 64 uh, semitones. Or maybe just type it in here on the left side. That's most of the times a lot faster. And now when we play something on the keyboard, you can see we changed the frequency as we change the notes on our keyboard. So we can just play this as a synthesizer, monophonic synthesizer. The only problem is that we have to change here manually the gain, but we can also change this with the modulator. So we use an ADSR here and modulate the gain with this maybe by, let's see. Okay, so now we have an envelope here. We can change how the loudness changes over time. You can also change it to square wave. So this is also possible. Um, so this is now a small monophonic synth if you want to use it in that kind of way. But you can also put this here in a container. And maybe we just to call up here an instrument selector, an instrument selector, and put this in there. So we have now one layer of this test tone. And what we want to do now is probably to add some macros here. Let's use a macro. And we modulate with this macro here, the attack. 
and also the decay and sustain. This is how we did instruments before the grid, before we had the grid. At least this was my kind of hobby, creating interesting devices with just a modulation system. So now we have basically mapped here all these macros to the ADSR, so we can change this on the parent container on the instrument selector here. And what else? Maybe, uh, maybe we introduce here a vibrato. And the vibrato is basically just a small LFO that we can dial in with the mod wheel on the keyboard. Right, so we can bring in a mod amount here with the mod wheel on the keyboard and we modulate here um, the frequency by maybe 20, let's say on 22, 23 semitones. Um, and now when we play this, Oh, we have to introduce a sustain and release decay. It's maybe a bit too much modulation here. Let's bring this back. Something like this. This is fine. So now we can just duplicate this layer here, which is the test tone device, of course. Duplicate this multiple times, let's say uh, four times. We have four voice or five voices now. And then select the instrument selector and change the playback mode to free robin. So now this device basically selects the next free layer to play on. So when you play one note, you play one free layer. And then you play another note polyphonically. You just take the next three layers. So we have a polyphonic synth now with uh, five voices you can play with. Okay, so you can create some kind of interesting or simple uh, polyphonic synthesizers with this. Um, maybe add here, let's say, a delay to that, delay two, maybe a chorus plus. A typical, you know, a typical classical, classic uh, subtractive synthesizer. So for that, it's uh, yeah, it's something you can do. So you can create synthesizers with the test tone, and there's also this um, this direct thing here, which gives you this kind of sound. But when you turn the frequency down, you get this one click sound here. And this click sound is basically all frequencies at once in just one single click. And you send this uh, through your reverb or effect chain, sample it, and then you can use it as an, um, as an impulse response in the convolution reverb of Bitwig Studio here. Just drag the wave, wave file into this and you can use it as a, yeah, convolution or impulse response if you want to. Another way you can use a test tone is um, in certain places like for instance uh, let's use here um, a polysynth and it's just a random sound. Okay so we close this down and there's for instance here a ring mod um, device and it uses here also an oscillator in there um, where you can ring modulate the oscillator with this with the source material. 
Let's pull this up with the loudness. But instead of the oscillator here, you can also use the source FX, put the test tone in there and do the same thing. But here you can now change the waveform so you can use a square wave and then uh, use the test tone and ring modulate the test tone with the, uh, with the source sound. So it's um, maybe a nice effect in certain use cases. So you can combine the test tone here with the ring mode and the source sound. So um, this is also possible.